Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. Today I'm smiling because I get to kick off this unreal, huge build up of a uh, tank upgrade and we're gonna have a look at my dream stand. Alright, so as I mentioned in the intro, today we're going to look at the stand for this tank and this is something that's been a, um, I guess, a, a, a turning point for this um, upgrade over the last year. It's the first thing I've been looking at, I guess uh, probably apart from the dimensions, I had to work out what sort of space I had to work with for the tank, which we've covered in uh, the announcement of the uh, upgrade. The next thing for me was the stand because everything else can then be built around it. We know how much room we've got to work with the sump and we can work out the glass to put on it later. The equipment will all fit in there. Everything really pivots around the stand and um, the stand was also one of the main reasons why um, I wanted to shut the current tank down despite getting on around about seven years of age. The stand with the wood and water, it just started to make me nervous. So with all these things considered and having a bit of a look around out there in the market, I couldn't help but uh, absolutely fall in love with and drool over the extruded aluminium stands uh, from Tidal Gardens. If you have I guess I should go back a step and explain why I wanted to go aluminium extrusion and that's because um, I guess we've got a few different options to make uh, stands out of. You've got wood, which is the very common option. Um, it's very affordable. Lots of people can manufacture wood to the requirements. It's fairly lightweight, um, you can paint it different finishes. Uh, it's easy to work with, I guess, in that you can always screw something into it. Um, and I've got wood stands for pretty much every one of my aquariums in my house. And it just, it just doesn't have a life span in the range that I'm looking for. And um, you know, mistakes happen with aquariums and uh, wood and water is not always a great outcome. Um, my main stand is, is swollen where there's been some uh, spillages before and it just it's the sort of thing that keeps me up at night. So wood was the direction that I just didn't want to go for this tank. I've still got all my other aquariums on wood stands, no problem, but this big monster upgrade, I wanted to have something a bit better than wood. Now, steel's probably the next logical option, um, and if we're sort of following the evolution of um, industrialization, I guess, um, steel's a fantastic option, particularly once you powder coat it. Um, it does require a little bit more uh, expert um, uh, manufacturing, and you'd need to get a local engineering place to uh, design it up, weld it up, and then you probably need to go get it either uh, galvanized or powder coated, something like that. It makes a very cost-effective and strong stand. Um, only downside being salt water and steel, yeah, they do kind of not work all that well together. You can rust, and I know I said galvanize or powder coat, but um, it, it still finds a way. I've had lots of powder coated steel things before, um, not even involved in marine um, applications, and rust still finds a way in, uh, particularly as soon as you start drilling it and putting little bits and pieces here, there, you're exposing the steel. It was a good option, but not the option for me. Um, my local fish shop has been doing quite a few stainless steel stands lately. Um, it costs a considerable, bit, considerable amount more than um, normal steel. Um, it fixes a number of those options. The stainless, uh, it's stainless, not stain proof, um, which is, you know, fair enough. It's fairly expensive, otherwise it ends up pretty much similar to the steel. You've got the same amount of flexibility with it. Um, probably a little bit more specialized in the manufacturing. And then there's been this trend um, of aluminium extrusion stands and um, extruded aluminium seems to be the way that uh, modern manufacturing, uh, when you look at places like Tesla and um, other uh, manufacturing facilities around the world that have been built recently, seems to be all extruded aluminium. And the reasons for that seem to be that it's so modular. Um, the extrusions allow you to add bits and pieces, take bits and pieces away, reuse bits of um, extrusion add little shelves out here or do this or do that. It's very, very modular and it's almost like a big uh, Lego or Meccano set. The other benefit is um, that uh, it, it doesn't rust. Now, I know people are gonna jump in and say aluminium doesn't mean, it, just because it doesn't rust doesn't mean it can't get, um, what's the word, uh, oxidized. However, it's not just raw aluminium, it is uh, anodized aluminium, which if you look after the anodize, it, um, it holds up fine. In fact, it holds up very well. And a lot of the time people use uh, steel fasteners or bolts um, when constructing these things and the, the bolts themselves are the bits that end up uh, rusting and it can make the uh, stand either look bad or also not be quite as strong. 
I'll take care of that by going uh, with all stainless steel fittings on this, which does again bring the cost right up, but um, I feel like it's the only way really to go. Over the extruded aluminium stands uh, from Tidal Gardens. If you haven't already checked out their YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do. The production quality is just to die for. They do some incredible work over there and uh, Fan's brand new uh, facility just looks amazing and he's used these beautiful works of art, otherwise known as extruded aluminium free stands. And it really got me in the mood thinking that that is absolutely the way to go for a no compromise tank upgrade. So I started having a look around to see what we could do about uh, getting our hands on some extruded aluminium stands. Um, had a look on the forums, had a look on some Facebook pages, and I uh, came across a place in America called Framing Tech. Uh, Framing Tech pre-make um, some uh, extruded aluminium products, including aluminium stands, and have a very good reputation, particularly amongst Americans. Um, their price looks very good. The quality of their uh, product looks very good. It was just really shipping that was a bit of a problem. Um, thankfully, though, they were very generous and were able to show the uh, blueprints, I guess, for their designs for various tank sizes on their website. So if you're looking at fabbing something up yourself, check out their website and uh, leverage a little bit of their designs because you know they've been engineered very well. After that, I started going down that path myself thinking, I wonder if I could get the components locally and then just follow the directions or follow the, the design flint from the framing tech um, stand. So I started to have a look on eBay and having a look at the price per meter of uh, the extrusions, what size extrusion to go for, whether I went uh, 40, 40, 60, 60, 80, 80, or somewhere in between. And then it dawned on me that if I'm gonna be spending this much money and building something this critical to the tank that I want to last a lifetime, I really probably should have something engineered. And it was a bit of the advice from Tidal Gardens on their video of extruded aluminum stands was to go to a proper place, get this engineered, get all the uh, angles right, get all the pieces you need right, just basically do it once, do it right. And I couldn't agree more. But then eventually I came across uh, Modular Components um, and Automation uh, Australia, which is uh, based up in Melbourne. Um, and one of the things that really drew me to uh, this manufacturer was that they carry brand name items. So it's not just uh, sort of the cheaper, they don't try to compete on price. I mean, you know, I guess they all try to compete on price, but uh, price is not the number one factor. They're not trying to be the cheapest on the market. They're trying to be the best on the market. And for this stand, that's exactly what I wanted. They use quality brand name uh, fittings and extrusions. They assist with the design, including um, uh, computer modeling of how much deflection there's gonna be for the weight um, and where we might need to bulk up um, uh, different extrusions or change the design or use different uh, fasteners, things like that. And you know, they were close enough to home. They were about an hour, 45, two hours away from my house, which isn't too far at all. The team there were above and beyond. The amount of work they did in helping uh, develop the design, we went through a number of iterations. Like I said, this has been in progress for about a year now. We started off with a eight foot aquarium, eight by three, because that's what I was gonna fit in the space. Now we're down to seven foot. We had um, a 40-40 extrusion at one stage, then we went 40-80, so it was kind of like a rectangular shape. And then the end result to get that deflection down to next to nothing, we ended up with 80-80 in a number of spaces. Um, and like I said, we touched, um, we swapped out the uh, carbon steel fittings for uh, stainless steel fittings. And I'm super happy with the result we've got. So I'm gonna jump into some of the footage from uh, the modular components and automation headquarters, picking up the uh, frame, assembling the frame, and then we'll wrap up with what my thoughts are at the end of it. All right, here we are at the uh, Modular Components and Automation Headquarters. I must admit it's not the uh, most uh, industry-leading building when you pull up, but uh, it's what's inside that counts. And uh, heading into the uh, showroom, I was quite excited to see some of the different uh, profiles and options and just uh, got the old creative juices thinking because I need to start thinking about the next step about how I'm going to uh, fit this cabinet out. And it's just a stand until you uh, put doors and panels and things on it, um, internally and externally. So uh, seeing some of the different uh, options and things they have here was uh, very handy. You can see some of the uh, leveling feet that I ended up getting as well that are rated to um, 750 kilos each, or maybe 1500 kilos each. I'd have to check the specs, but they're well and truly within range. We've got end caps there. You got the, all sorts of rollers and things there, which is what a lot of the time this uh, extrusion is used for. But over in the corner over here, there was a few uh, paneling options, which uh, got me quite excited. You got these nice uh, seals there. You got the things that hold panels in place there. All sorts of pretty cool little things like that, which I think can really elevate this um, frame to the next level. You can see some of the uh, covers there that uh, just cover over those uh, openings. 
all pretty cool stuff. So I reckon that'll uh, turn out pretty good. I've just got to take my time and think through it. So I was told to come around this side door here and you see old mate here, he's uh, getting my order ready. He's cut up all the uh, pieces for me. He's uh, done the drilling, he's done the tapping, all the stuff that I wanted to uh, get done to make this a much, much easier job. And um, one thing that I was super happy with, and you're gonna see a bit of footage of this, is that they actually label every single one of the pieces, which makes assembly so much easier. And um, this part I was quite happy with because it, um, I've only got a fairly small uh, size or medium sized wagon and I was able to fit a seven by three foot um, aquarium stand in the back of my station wagon, which is something that um, I didn't think I'd ever be able to say that it, um, I guess, never thought I'd be able to say that I could do, but I guess um, uh, you can do the same with wooden until it's assembled, I guess. But uh, it did make transporting all these items home. And then uh, with the labels, I was able to lay them out. So I knew that that was item one. And then now uh, we look at this one, we've got item three. Uh, all the different pieces there just made life much, much easier when assembling. We even got things like 6A and 6B and 5, and then of course a whole box of uh, fasteners and end caps and uh, whatnot. These are the bits that are quickly add up on the price, but um, being stainless, I, I, I just wanted it not to rust, so it was well worthwhile. And uh, the team at uh, MCA also gave me a uh, suggested list of uh, assembly. So they broke down what number each part was, and then on the next screen you'll see which um, parts they recommend I assemble first, which did make the assembly process much easier. So they recommend building the top frame, and then uh, putting on the eight vertical posts, then fitting in the crossbars, putting on the bottom parts, flipping it over um, once you got the feet on. So lo and behold, here comes the time to build, and I'll put a little uh, stopwatch on so you can see um, how long it took me to do. Um, unless you're paying attention to the uh, episodes of TV on in the background. Now this is actually the top frame that I'm building first here, just putting all the fasteners on and then getting them in. Now I'm building the legs, so at the moment the stand is upside down. So the legs are going on, we've got 80-80 in the corners and 40-80 uh, in the middle. Then the cross braces on those uh, vertical posts go in. And then finally, the oh, I made a little bit of a mistake, so I had to take a couple of bits off. There's a few uh, holes that you have to line up, and I uh, had them around the wrong way, so uh, that's all back on. We now put the cross braces on those pieces. These middle ones use a different type of fastener, which uh, did have me uh, tricked a little bit, but once I worked it out, uh, on they went nice and easy enough. Then I just put on the uh, feet. We've got uh, eight feet on this bad boy, which keep it nice, and uh, makes it easy to adjust, make sure it's level. And then finally, we flip it over and uh, pose for the camera. <laughs> I was pretty happy with that. As you can see, it took me about an hour and a half to put it together. This is the finished product and I could not be happier. It just looks so modern, so strong, so clean. It just looks like exactly what I envisioned and um, it, I'm just so excited. And uh, when I pan up, you'll be able to see the um, the the existing aquarium in the background there. You can see the little uh, clearance marks there. They're the holes where uh, you put the Allen key through to uh, tighten up the fittings. So there are all the uh, fittings and things that hold this together are all internal. So there's nothing sticking out. There's It's just clean as a whistle and um, so, so strong. Um, I realize I'm not quite as heavy as a uh, 1500 liter aquarium, but uh, I jumped up on it and uh, I tell you what, I could hold a uh, boot scooting party up there and it's not gonna wiggle one little bit. Um, it's so, so strong. I know a couple of my mates were a little bit uh, dubious of an aluminium uh, stand, but uh, I went over and above with the um, with the profile and made it very strong. These are literally the three tools I use to assemble it. A, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a 5mm Allen key, good old Sid Chrome T-bar, a 6mm Allen key, and then optional was a shifter. It just uh, made it a little bit easier on the fingers after an hour and a half to put the feet on. So. It literally took me three tools to assemble this entire stand um, and only an hour and a half. I'm gonna be able to pull this down and take it down to my fish shop where we're gonna start working on the cladding and the uh, floor and the something. You can see the um, existing aquarium in the background there. It looks so small and dated compared to this, um, this stand here, which is both good and bad. I mean, I, I love my current aquarium, but this just looks like the absolute next step. So the big question, what did it cost? All right, this is where you're gonna take a deep breath. I've got the full invoice here, so you can see the prices of all of the profiles, all of the cuts, all of the tappings and drillings, all of the fasteners, 
everything there and you can see uh, it's all itemized. Um, I didn't get any discount at all or anything from um, MCA. This is the full price. Um, so you can trust that this is a completely unbiased uh, video. And yeah, when you zoom down in, I have highlighted it for you. The total was $3,242.70. Like I said, not a cheap option. All right, guys, there you have it. Step one in this upgrade. I'm so, so excited to have this um, upgrade underway. This frame was such a, a huge component of it. And like I said, it was something I've been chewing over for quite a long time. But um, I'm so happy to say that the frame is here. It's assembled and it just looks incredible. Every time I look at that frame and then I look at my existing tank, it just um, it fills my stomach with butterflies of thinking about how cool this new tank's gonna be because step one is already so far above and beyond where my current tank is that um, I just I just get excited over the end product of where this new tank's gonna go. It does leave me with a few questions though. Uh, I absolutely love the extrusion, it's fantastic. It's a brilliant stand, but it's not a cabinet yet. It is literally a stand. I've got to clad this. Um, 8020 or, or extruded aluminium offers a huge number of uh, possible options for uh, doors and hinges and panels and sliders and you name it. Um, there's things that will literally bolt onto this frame that can make my frame into a cabinet. I'm thinking I still want to go a uh, wooden um, uh, cabinet, like a cladding on this. I want to have a nice painted panels on the outside. Inside the cabinet might be a bit different. We might go for some uh, weatherproof sealing in there so we can kind of uh, seal this cabinet up. I might put some uh, acrylic panels in there. Obviously, there'll be a sump as well, but um, uh, the next step I really want to think about is how we're going to clad this tank. And I'm not saying it'll be the next video, but I want to start thinking about it now because it is going to help um, decide some of the uh, the other components. I've got to work out how I'm going to, how I'm going to dress this um, beautiful stand because I only really want to see it when I open the doors. So if anyone out there is a cabinet maker or um, has some experience in cladding 8020 or um, extruded aluminium, feel free to yell out. Give me some advice. Pop it in the comment section down below because um, I'm really looking for some um, inspiration and some uh, design ideas. So don't be shy. Share your uh, thoughts and ideas down below and um, other than that, guys, I hope you're enjoying this um, upgrade so far. If you are, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And of course, um, if you've got any words of wisdom or uh, support, pop it in the comment section down below. And if you have not done yet, I can't help but notice every time when I look at the analytics of my YouTube channel, the majority of my views are coming from people that are not subscribed. It costs you nothing, guys. Feel free to subscribe. You won't miss any future videos. Um, it'll really help me out a long way with this uh, YouTube venture. So uh, subscribe and hit that bell notification. It'll make sure you don't miss any future videos. But um, that's all I've got time for today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe and uh, keep on reefing. Cheers. Bye.